Oftentimes, landscape architects, urban designers are used to working at this scale. So I just want to give you how I would work on a drawing like this inside Morfolo Trace. And this is actually submitted by a student who started the project in AutoCAD. And I believe he brought it into a app called Clip Studio Paint, where he finished the drawings with colorings and drawing on top. So I want to just show you how I would do this inside Morfolio Trace to avoid things like pixelation and what is some of the best practices that I would recommend. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go inside my Morfolio Trace and I'm going to bring this image in as a photo. Now this image was previously saved to my photos. Let me just go ahead and find it. It is this drawing right here. And as I bring this in, you will see that there isn't a scale assigned to this or this drawing isn't calibrated to scale. Fortunately, we have a legend that's roughly this size, which can work with us to calibrate this drawing to scale. Ideally, you would want to have a longer dimension. So when you do calibrate it, it's just a little bit more accurate, but let's just use this in our example. So I know this drawing, it was drawn in metric. So this 100 is actually 100 meters. So I'm just gonna take these two points on both end and I'm gonna switch from imperial to metric here and I'm going to type in in input 100 meters and you can switch to any of the other units in here. So I'm just gonna make sure it's on meters as it says right here and tap on finish. Okay, so now if I pull up my scale ruler right here, I'm just gonna do a quick look and this seems to be calibrated correctly. So let me just zoom back a little bit and give you an overview of what I'm trying to do here. So as this is right now, this drawing is calibrated already. And by default, you'll see every time you import in a drawing, there is a blank canvas that has opacity on about halfway that's going to be created for you. And this layer is built on the exact same size as the base layer. And this base layer is the drawing that we brought in just to clarify. So with Morfolio, the current export limit is 4K. So which means when you export a drawing, it will export the drawing at the size of the layer. And that layer, the maximum width of that layer is 4,000 pixel. So in here, you can see if I were to export this layer, you can see the boundary of this layer. So the maximum width is 4,000 pixels. That is a kind of an important concept to, to recognize and be aware of. So when you're exporting drawings, you always want to export it as close as to the layer as possible. So what is the best practice when you're creating these layers that are a little bit bigger, when you're a little bit more zoomed in? Because you've probably heard at this scale, you want to create a couple more smaller layers to avoid pixelation. If we don't do that, and if we just start drawing right on this layer that was created for us. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more and I'm going to select a pen. And uh, this is at six point. And you can see, actually, I'm just gonna go a little bit bigger. So it's a little bit more obvious. You can see as I zoom into this drawing, if I'm tracing over the building itself, it's not as high of a quality as you would want when you're drawing this close up. So there's a slight pixelation. I would say for most people, even for myself, I could maybe live with this little pixelation as I see when I'm zoomed in. This may be okay, but if you are really creating a, a more detailed drawing and then you want to include a little bit more details in, in the building or the landscape around it, and you want to have a sharper, more high quality line weight. What I would do instead is, I'm gonna recommend you is, instead of drawing on this layer that was created for you, what I want you to think about is, is there a way to create, to break this canvas or this drawing down into quadrants? So maybe your, maybe that's this first quadrant, or when I say quadrant, I really mean a smaller zoomed in layer. Maybe this is one layer, and maybe this is the second one and this. So let's give this a try. So when I do create a layer with just this much in my 
in what I can see in a layer, that in theory will give me a higher quality line weight. So I can zoom in a little closer and be able to draw a lot more details without the pixelations that you will be able to see if this entire layer was the layer that you're drawing on. That said, I'm just gonna temporarily turn off this layer. I'm gonna just single tap to get it to zoom to here. So as I said, if I were trying to maybe create a, a quadrant like this, maybe this is the amount of area that I would like to see. So now I'm going to create a new layer based on what I can see in my iPad screen. And this is going to create a new layer based on what I can see. So I'm gonna create this layer and uh, you can see that it's landed on the very top. And then I'm gonna go zooming right here. I'm gonna go ahead and create another layer and then we'll do the same thing for this lower right hand corner go ahead and create another layer now essentially what you see is three layers are created instead of just this one sheet so if i just double tap on this you can see each of the three layers and their extent and this is what we want or this is what i recommend at least and you'll see it is maybe a little annoying to see the the opacity overlaying on each other and then you'll also see the shadow the shadow around the layer itself in some cases that's there to help you identify the different size of the layer but just to avoid this kind of layering over over each other what i want to do is to get rid of it to make this as clean as possible so when we are drawing on this we don't see these edges it's not going to be printed when you export it but it's just easier so that when you're drawing, you're not seeing all these distractions. So what I would do first is I'm going to turn off the layer paper opacity 100% to, to zero, or actually from 50 to zero. So I'm gonna do that for each of the layer. And essentially what we've done here is we've made the trace paper completely transparent, even though there is a paper on top of this, but it's transparent and to get this layer to act like a trace paper with a little bit more opacity what i'm going to do is go to the base layer and i'm going to decrease the image opacity instead so here because we're going to be drawing on top of this so imagine if this is what if this was a cat layer and we're going to be drawing on top of this i would do this to create this sort of a layer structure for now and to get rid of the overlapping in different pages what I would do here is I'm going to go to my range and under preference, I'm going to toggle the drop shadow off. So now what you're seeing right now is it's kind of a, a single layer. It looks like this is a single trace layer, but in fact, it's composed of three smaller layers. When you have these three smaller, more zoomed in layers, so if I just single tap on any of this layer, this will zoom to the extent of where they're created. And if I were just to take the same brush, well actually maybe not the same brush, I'm actually gonna pick a, a smaller brush in here. And if I just zoom in here a little bit more, and now if I start drawing on around this, building my line quality are just going to be a lot more high quality and you're not going to experience the pixelation as much because these layers are more zoomed in so i am just going to go very quickly and do a couple of things so it looks like there's some substance before i move on to to the next area just for the sake of demonstration let's say these are the areas of the drawings that I want to be able to to have and obviously your line work are going to be a lot better and just make sure the building lines are a little thicker the idea is we want to be drawing in these more zoomed in layers let's say when you're done with the work that you've done in this area and now I'm going to move on to this lower quadrant so you'll notice something as soon as I lay out my drawings or as soon as i start drawing you'll see this layer the layer that i'm drawing on will automatically switch to the layer that it was created so you can see that in this hand corner if i just zoom back out a little bit you can see this was drawn hmm. okay i think there the reason for that was 
there was a little bit of overlap. Let me see right here. Oh, okay, you can see that because these two layers are overlapping. So some of the drawings were were drawn on this layer and some of the drawings on that layer. So that doesn't doesn't really bother me at all. What I'm trying to show is you don't really have to switch the layer to draw on. It will do that for you or it will detect that for you as soon as you start drawing. You don't have to actively switch to a different layer. So this is actually a pretty useful feature, I would say. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the same thing on this corner before I move on to this third quadrant. And please don't criticize me for my lack of landscape drawing abilities. I've done a little bit of work in here. And the last quadrant I'm gonna do is this quadrant. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, if we zoom back, you can see if we single tap any of these, it will zoom to the layer that it was drawn on. So you, in the future, you can just work in this quadrant, make this really pretty or add a lot of detail and just export this part of the drawing as a single image. Or you can come back to export this entire site plan as a whole. And then I'm just going to give you a one tip to, to draw this, you'll see that when I zoom, I'm not getting any of the rotations either by intent or accidentally. So you'll see my layers, they don't rotate. So this is totally a preference sort of a thing. So if you want to have your layer not rotate when you're zooming, by default, it will. You can go to your setting. So I'm gonna actually save my project. You can go to your setting and to turn the auto auto rotate off is this feature right here. It's called zoom rotation lock. So when you have it turned on, like I do right now, and when I go back to my project, you're not going to see this rotation be enabled, which is useful. So when you want to actually rotate your drawing, now you have to rotate it like a physical paper, but on the iPad, you can always just rotate with your finger. But in this case, I've chosen to turn that off just for the sake of convenience. Imagine you are going to keep working on this drawing until everything is ready. It's called in, it's line editing, and you want to export this as a drawing to a PDF. And the power of exporting in Morpholo Trace is when we do this, we can export it to scale and to, to the size of the actual paper size that you want to export in. So when we export, we always want to export to PDF or in 4K. I mean, you can export to an image as well, but when you do export to an image, you're not going to be assigning, you, you can't assign a scale and a paper size to it. It would just be a JPEG. So if you're using it for presentation or if you're using it to plot it out to the actual size that you want, you want PDF and, and 4K. So that's, that's best. And by default, it's going to want to export as a background. And I'll talk about it in another video, what this background and screen and uh, what they do. But right now I want to focus on this layer tab. So in this layer tab, what we have here is we're going to be able to see all the visible layers that are currently turned on that can be exported as a PDF. But the only thing we want to export is using the base image itself. So I want to use the base image as the image as the layer that I want to export to PDF. So what I'll do is just to manually turn off all these other layers that I don't need to see. In this base image, what you can see in here is the drawings, the three drawings on three different layers. And by default, it's going to show you print size is set to screen, print scale is set to scale to fit. The first thing we want to change right here is print size. So Imagine we have this really large master plan and I'm imagining we want to get it to a as big of a paper size as possible. So in the shoes of a landscape designer or urban designer, I'm going to go with a 36 by 48 inch paper size. That's which is arc size E in the United States. And I'm going to hit on my check mark. And then the next thing I want to do is to find a scale that will fit this drawing in there. So if you're not sure, I will give a few a different try. So because this was started in a metric, let me see one to 500 
clearly that is too much drawing for this paper size. What about one to a thousand? Okay, so at one to a thousand, we're we're getting some cutoffs around the image. This may be fine. Maybe you don't need the cutoff. And by default, there's also one to 1250. And at this scale, this will fit the size of the paper. All the drawings will fit in here, and this will be printed with a 4K resolution. So I'm going to pretend this is the size that we want to export to scale. I'm gonna hit my check mark. So now you're essentially ready to export. Now, most of the time when you're exporting this to PDF, you're either printing it from your large format printer to scale. So when you do print it at 36 to 48, it will be printed. If you're printing it at one to one, it will be printed to one to 1250 scale on that paper size. There's also the possibility that you want to, let's say, link it into your InDesign, into a document where you want to send it off to a presentation. In those cases, you may want to alter the paper size and see what scale will fit on a typical, you know, 12 by 18, which is the size that I used to print for the client. So if we're interested to see what scale would fit on 12 by 18, what I would do here is instead of the 1250, I might do 2500. And clearly this even doesn't, this scale doesn't fit the 12 by 18. So I might even go a little bit bigger. But if you were to print it out by, let's say 24 by 36 at 21 to 2500 scale, when you bring in InDesign, you can just scale this down by 50% and this scale essentially would become one to 5,000. Hopefully that makes sense. And that's typically something that I usually do when I bring it into InDesign at half size. So this is really all I want you to consider when you are working at this scale, this master plan scale. And when you're printing it out, just remember, hopefully you want the image with a drawing to fit to the paper size as closely as possible because the width of the paper itself is going to be 4,000 wide. So the more drawing, the more image you can fit in there, the higher the quality of those images will be. So clearly you can see in here, I have a lot of white space. It is my best interest to actually use the 36 by 48 at this 1250, one to 1250 scale, because my images are going to be as close as possible. And if for some reason, yeah, your image is off to the side a little bit, a simple trick is just to double tap on your image or within this, this is kind of like the paper space in AutoCAD, and then you can reposition your drawing. So if this was, let's say, at a bigger scale, for example, if this was at one to 500, and then you're only interested to see this part of the drawing, you can position or you can center that part of the drawing to be on this paper if your needs is to not show the entire drawing. Hopefully this is clear and you got something out of this. Let me know if you have any questions regarding this workflow.